now that we got rudely interrupted. <laughs> The Nissan Zama Heritage Collection is where all the most significant production Nissans and race cars live in perfect condition. I've been to the collection before, but this time I met up with my good friend Kaiza, who builds incredible cars in the digital world. We talk a little bit about his inspirations, including many of the Nissans on the show floor that inspire him to build even crazier cars. It's uh, pretty appropriate for you to come matching one of the cars here. Almost. Look. See, look. <laughs> look at this, hold on. <laughs> Your vest is the same color as the bonnet. Yeah. And then you have the rest of the livery here. here. Perfect. I, I didn't plan it. And your shoes too. So I could tell this is your favorite car then. Yeah. It's between this and the Silvia as well, um, to be honest, just because the super silhouette era of cars for me has just been pivotal in the creation of my artwork, the inspiration, yeah. the outlandishness, but the functionality of it. It's cool because I've been following your work for so many years and to see different elements of the race cars that are here on your creations is something else. It really is cool. Thank you. So then tell me about what you like here because this is your first time here. This is your it first is. time in Japan, yeah. which is mind blowing because you design all sorts of cars, but it seems like the JDM cars that you design really stand out to me. Thank you. JDM cars are me. It's the heart of everything automotive. It's where I first saw cars being modified. It's where I first saw this kind of culture of personalizing your car to yourself. But that's just one aspect of it. You have then the motorsport side, your super silhouette cars, your Japanese touring cars, GC300, GT500. I drew a lot of inspiration, mainly thanks to games like Gran Turismo, and, you know, from your Pennzoil R34s to the R33s, and the Group A cars as well, the R32s. Like seeing these cars here and seeing an OEM car come stuck with fender flares on, it's insane. It's something as simple as just being a 240Z or maybe the Ken Mary, you know, like seeing them in that form, you're like, okay, so you're not just sticking on a fender to a car for no reason whatsoever. There is history behind it, there's heritage behind it. And then you go from something as simple as that to something as wild as this. I can't imagine this had wind tunnel testing. And I'm just <laughs> guessing, you know, this is legitimately a box yeah. with some aero bits on it. It is. We're on these cars here because we're close to them, but in terms of design aspects, it's small details as well. So like kind of the fins on the hood, which then extend to the windscreen. And then you have fins on the windscreen to obviously help channel air over. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see the actual functionality of that, but it's the fact that that exists and then the combination of the stance of the car, the height, the fact it raced at this kind of level, the wheel choice, everything just ties together. And then the livery design, like a lightning bolt. It is something else. I love this era of cars, but the cars that really speak to me are the 90s era cars. Yes. The cars that I actually yeah. had a chance to see when I was growing up, or just the cars that I had a chance to see in Gran Turismo, in Best Motoring, in magazines. Yeah. That seems to be really the theme coming here in Japan. It's meeting your heroes. It really is. The crazy thing is you build things in the digital world with your mind. One of the things I always like to talk about when I'm talking about your work is the fact that it's honestly not fair for somebody like me because <laughs> yeah. I have to photograph cars that actually exist in the physical world 
You don't have to do that. You're no. not limited to that. No. But you also have to take inspiration from things that really do exist. Yes. And that's what's here. Yeah. And it's in abundance here as well. The variants you have of the old GT500 with the new GT500, it's ridiculous. <sighs> Look at the aero. Oh, and this is a later generation where yeah. function was actually something that was backed by computer 3D modeling or wind tunnel testing. That is that right there. Out of this collection, I have a favorite Group C, which is the R92 CP. From a visual perspective, it was always just very instantly recognizable. But this, alongside the 787B, for me, mm -hmm. was like dream stuff. But then I love being able to see the progression. You know, like you notice as they progress, the splitters have gradually grown. The canards they've introduced have gradually grown. Like this came from an era where it seemed like anything was possible. The 3.5 liter twin turbo V8 from this era was the precursor to a lot of the McLaren V8 3.5 liter turbo motors. I didn't know that. And then you speak about the R390s, the GT1 car. It's you know? a peculiar design. I think it works better in race form, but I feel like they had to make a road going homologated version in order to make that. I'm glad that they did it in this color. I think it looks great. I love the fact that it uses Z32 headlights because like you have the Lamborghini Diablo that uses Z32 headlights yeah. as well as you this do. and of course the Z32. Oh, where do they start? Run. <laughs> That's the problem with this place, it's so big. We barely heard this start and rev. We were on the other side of this building. Where's Bueller? This is it, this is it, dude. let it go. Let it burn I was like, wait a minute, I don't need to run, I'll just walk normally. Yeah, pretty much. That's right. You're all on mic, I am, I am, <laughs> all on mic. Larry had to run and I didn't. <laughs> it's the kind of content I'm here for. That's it. I'm blown away, dude. It's only two people that maintain this whole collection. So this is your first time in Japan. What do you think about Japan in general? <laughs> I've only been here two days and I'm obsessed with everything down to just road markings on the floor. One thing that really blew my mind about what you've been doing is you've actually been looking at scenes and you yes. take the picture for reference and then later on you'll actually use it for one of your renderings. I came on this trip and I'm like, okay, what can I get that's useful to me that I will enjoy working with and using? And it's just being in different environments, if there's an empty space, it's taking a photo and be like, I could put a car in here if I wanted to at some point in the future. But it's also just the architecture in general around Japan, the side streets, alleyways, empty car spots, to textures on buildings and like everything can be used. It's how my brain is kind of wired. It's like, what kind of space can I use to place a car here? Do I need to stand over there or do I need to stand over there? Or, it's funny you know. because the way that I think is completely different in that I look at the space and I think about the physical aspect of it. Like, yeah. oh, could I hit up Nissan or Toyota or whatever to borrow a cool car to yes. put here to yeah. actually take the photo? Yeah. You just take it beyond. But it's like you do it with a purpose, right? You do it when you're shooting a car. And it's the same for me if it's a car that doesn't exist. Like, you look at this spot here, for example, in front of the R32 GTR, I'm like, there's a clear spot there. What if you wanted to position just a stock version there? Or it's just trying to think above and beyond, see different variations, like what you could do. If I was able to ring this on and be like, hey, can I have your GTR LM at Tatsumi PA by this time, you know? That would be insanely cool, and I would love to do that. But sometimes that's not possible, and you have to think of ways to kind of <laughs> recreate what you want to recreate. It might be best done on a PC or computer, but it doesn't replace coming to a place like this, seeing these cars in person. I, I, You're speechless. I, yeah, I'm st we've been here, what, two hours almost? And I'm still speechless. 
If you asked me three, four years ago what my favorite car here is, I would have gone immediately to the Super Silhouette cars and been like, hands down, favorite car. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, my brain is now rewired in a way where I have to design something where it can be built and brought to real life. Now, it would be more something like the R33. They're functional body kits, but you can recognize the original streetcar that that car is based off. And I get so many ideas as well, like for the new cars I'm creating kits for or designs for, I look at the old kind of the Ken Mary race cars or even the rally car liveries and I'm like, that would look amazing on this new Z in stock form, you know? Like it's just trying to imagine the things that don't exist and that's what I really enjoy doing on an artistic kind of level. <laughs> look at this man's face. <laughs> look don't, at this man's don't. face. It's, uh, Definitely eye-opening. Kind of gets me a little bit emotional just being here, yeah. you know, and I'm happy that this place exists. Exactly the same. Well, I think I'm even more grateful to be here with the people I'm with. And <laughs> like, if I ever come back to Japan again, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Nissan is so proud of their heritage when it comes to their streetcars and their race cars. The fact that this place exists and they make sure all of these cars are in such immaculate condition blows me away. It is so great for big Nissan nerds like Kaizo and myself to be able to enjoy these cars this way. Part of it is because so many of these cars I've never even seen in person. Also checking out the collection for the first time was my good friend, Cody Walker. Cody has really taken it upon himself to continue his brother's incredible legacy through Reach Out Worldwide, which was started by Paul in 2010, which helps with relief in disaster struck areas all around the world. Cody also runs large car culture events called Fuel Fest with proceeds going straight into Reach Out Worldwide. So this is your first time here? Yeah, dude, I've never been in here before. Have you seen pictures? Have you like seen a couple videos? I knew of this place, but I haven't seen any footage. Pictures don't really do it justice. You have to see it to believe it. What really gets me is the ordinary pedestrian cars that you didn't think that they would need to save, they saved. Oh, it's unreal, right? Dude, this is a family vehicle. So, dude, my first car was a 64 Nova wagon. When I found out about this car, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I've always loved wagons. They're gonna pull out the stage yeah, for Cody to check out. Oh, look, 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 like love service, dude. I just asked if I could check out this uh, Autech 260 RS the Stasia, and they're, they're wheeling it out for me here at the uh, Nissan Zama Heritage Museum. <laughs> this is so cool. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. This is so cool. Thank you. Thank you. See this right here? I've got kids. Put them in the back. You got space for the, the dog or whatever, man. This thing is, I'm all about this wagon right now. I love the seats too. Like I, I love how Dude, simple the, everything with the is. Red, the red uh, perforations. Yeah. Dude. R33 wagon. Get yeah. Just leave, leave the car and it's like most pure. Yeah. And like, leave that front end. The front end looks great. There's no reason. I think it looks out. amazing. For Honestly, I feel like it's very proportional. If you look at the side of the car, it's so long. You know, like yeah. the roof especially. Oh yes, it's it's, it's a big boy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny because um, this is such a pedestrian car for everyone else here in Japan. For sure. Yeah. But we're like, we're all like, oh my god! <laughs> so Jonathan, if you convince Nissan to make this now, mm -hmm. um, then you got a, a couple sales right here, dude. You got it. I don't know what you. <laughs> you, guys are funny. you got a question, Mike? This thing is so cool. I love this. So my first car was a Volvo 740 GLE that my parents handed me down. It was horrible. It barely ran, no AC. 
It would sometimes stall on left turns. It was bad. But the first car that I actually saved my money up for was this, Nissan Maxima. I bought this when I got my license and it was a 1994 that I had, five speed V6 with LSD. I felt like hot <laughs> driving this around, dude. It was so <laughs> sick. It makes me happy to know that something like this exists. Like, I don't know how it is with a lot of other manufacturers, but the fact that Nissan appreciates their heritage right. and appreciates like the racing side. Yeah. And I get saving the Stagia, I get saving the Nur spec GTR, yeah. Yeah. you know, especially the race cars. But then you see some of these cars, like this Laurel. While this is cool and I would drive it every day. They I, made a spot for it and it's here. Yeah. The yeah. foresight that somebody <laughs> had to do all of that, right? This is pretty much one of my this, favorite rows here. This tripped me out. S15 Varietta convertible. convertible. Yeah. Only sold in Japan. Very rare. Yeah. We, when we walked in, someone's like, yo, convertible. <laughs> like, <laughs> This only came in naturally aspirated, and this was actually the first right-hand drive car I've ever driven. A blue one like this. I drove, oh, no way. Yeah, I drove it in Norway, and it was just so weird to, to feel right-hand drive, and also on top of that, I've never driven an S15 before. And it you know, was the convertible? Yeah, it was the convertible. That's even more weird. Yeah. Why it's would just, you want a convertible in Norway? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It's just cool to see a pristine version here. And look at this S14, right-hand drive. I don't think I've ever seen a brand new one or a clean one like this. In the US, you know, they just get destroyed. Well, they get so clapped out and they're just... They've all been turned into drift cars. This and this S chassis right here, this S13. Yeah. Look at the original wheels. It's so 90s. It's so 90s. The one that really speaks to me is this green one. Why is that? I love the two-tone, like the gray on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it looks so cool. Wow, 135 it, horsepower, naturally aspirated. 1.8 liter C A T D E. is cherry too, look at that. It's so cool. It's fun for me walking around with you uh, because people appreciate the fact that you are a true car enthusiast through and through. You're doing your thing with Fuel Fest and it's just so cool to see. We've had a chance to go to a couple of them. Hopefully we can go to a lot more because there's just so many stories to tell. Like you said, I wanna see the JDM Hummers. That's what I wanna see. I wanna see like, the very detailed and very interesting car culture that we don't normally get to see. If you're in Japan or if you're planning a trip out there, it's definitely worth reaching out to the Zama Collection to see if you can schedule a tour. I advise you to reach out to them months in advance because they are super busy. Thank you. I'm on way. <laughs> Okay. This one, this way, this way, this one. <laughs>